Dear learners, welcome you all to this video which is based on your MFA semester first course unit 12 that is Swami Vivekananda and his educational thoughts. If we look at the learning objective of the unit, after watching the video you will be able to depict the life sketch of Swami Vivekananda, describe the life and philosophy of Swami Vivekananda, explain Vivekananda's educational thoughts. Uh, if we uh, look at the life sketch of Swami Vivekananda, then we have seen uh, Swami Vivekananda is a great philosopher, a reformer, and he dedica dedicated his whole life for the upliftment of humanity. In fact, he was a great teacher as well as practical saint of modern India. He was born in Bengali Karstra family on Monday, 12 January 1863 in Calcutta. His real name was Narendranath Dutta. His father, Biswanath Dutta, was a famous lawyer in Calcutta High Court. His mother's name was Bhubaneswari Devi. Vivekananda inherited a religious temperament and farsighted intelligence from his parents. He was deeply interested in the study of philosophy and religion. He studied history, literature, and philosophy since a very early age. Harvard Spencer and J. S. Mill were his favorite philosopher and what sort what he, was his favorite poet. Uh, so uh, if we see the, his ideology, actually uh, Sri uh, Ramakrishna Paramhansa inspired him to lead the life of a monk and uh, spread the light of Indian philosophy throughout the world. When Sri Ramakrishna Paramhansa died in the year 1876, Swami Vivekananda established Ramakrishna Mission to uh, carry on further the unfinished religious assignment of his Guru Father. He set out for the Himalayas in 1890 and stayed there for two years. In 1892, uh, he reached Koinakumari and uh, visited the scared uh, sacred string of the goddess and he jumped into the sea and to reach a rock, he started meditation there. He then went to Chennai when the people were very much impressed by his personality. Uh, they collected funds to send him uh, to America to participate in the Bishwa Dharma Sammelon in September 1893. He introduced to the world Indian religion, culture and philosophy to the world. As uh, a consequence, uh, the unknown monk of India suddenly gained international attention at the Parliament of Religions held in Chicago in 1893 and as a philosopher, he proved that the ancient philosophy of Vedanta could successfully meet the challenges of today and solve the modern problems very effectively. He was actually the person who synthesized the idealistic philosophy of the West and creative Vedantic philosophy of Hindu religion. He preached universal brotherhood and uh, interpreted humanism uh, in his idealistic manner. He died on July 4, 1902 at the young age of 39 years. Uh, if we uh, see the Vivekananda's philosophy, then the Vivekananda actually describe God as a supreme power and God is of infinite existence, infinite knowledge and infinite bliss. He is present in man. Vivekananda has a firm faith on different world religions. He thinks that every religion is progressive and has many good points. He advocates that no religion is inferior or superior to another. The goal of all religion is reaching God through spiritualism and brotherhood. The most important or the significant contribution of Swami Vivekananda to the modern world is his interpretation of religion as a universal experience of transcendent reality common to all humanity. The main essence of his philosophy of life to become fearless through struggle and serve humanity with peace. He wanted to develop the individuals who are without fear from enemies, face all the challenges boldly and confidently without any suppression. 
He firmly believed in the equality of mankind and pressed extensively to remove biases and exploitation based on caste, creed, religion, race, and gender. So, if we look at the famous quotations regarding fearlessness, as Swamiji rightly pointed out, that all power is within you. You can do anything and everything. Never think yourself weak. So, if we look at the Vivekananda's educational thought, then we have seen Vivekananda has been ranked among the greatest educationists of the world. His philosophy of education is based on permanent truth of Upanishada, Bhagavad Gita, and Vedanta. To him, education is the manifestation of the perfection already in man. No knowledge comes from the outside. It resides within the human mind. Man manifests knowledge and discovers it within himself, which already exists there through eternity. Uh, if uh, regarding the educational thought, uh, according to him, education is not the mass of knowledge or information inserted into the minds of children by force. Real education is that which prepares a man for struggle of existence. It prepares a man for social service, develop his character and finally imbues him with the spirit and courage of a lion. He emphasized on spiritual development of child along with material advancement. Education is that process which prepares a man for struggle of existence by making himself reliant and by developing his character and intelligence. It is in fact according to him education is a lifelong process. He believed that real education is that which enables one to stand on one's feet. According to him, we have hold on the spiritual and secular education of the nation. We must dream it, talk it, think it, and must walk it out. Uh, actually, we can, uh, if we uh, discuss Vivekananda's educational philosophy, then we can discuss Vivekananda's educational philosophy mainly into the six dimensions, how his philosophy influenced the aims of education, the curriculum, the method of teaching, disciplines, uh, the uh, place of the teachers or the role of a teacher, place of a women in the Indian education system particularly. Uh, let us discuss one by one in a very brief way because regarding aim of education, Swamiji has summed up the aims of education into two words basically then man making. According to him, the ultimate aim of all education and training is man making. Education should create self-confidence and self-realization based on the balanced human relationship. Swamiji remarks that aim of education is producing men of iron muscles and steel nerves to promote national development and produce fearless and physically well-developed citizens of tomorrow. In his words, power is life and weakness is death. Stressing the need for mental development of the child, he wants the kind of education which enables the child to stand on its own feet. The ideal of all education and training should be designed in such a way that it should develop the moral, character and personality development of the individual. Besides development of spirituality, serving of mankind, promotion of universal brotherhood, material, technological and scientific progresses are some of the essential uh, recommendation of the Swamiji to prepare the site for survival in this world. So regarding curriculum, in order to achieve the aims of education which was advocated by the Swamiji, curriculum included those subjects through which the material progress along with spiritual development can be brought. According to him, a curriculum should have basically three parts for spiritual perfection. Swamiji uh, described religion, philosophy, Purani, Upanishada for material advancement and prosperity. Uh, Swamiji recommended language, geography, science, political science, economic, psychology, art, agriculture and technical subject. And for physical development, he advised games, sports and other physical exercise. Along with Sanskrit and other Indian vernacular, he also recommended the teaching of English language and literature. 
the study of humanities with special reference to Indian culture, science, geography, social science, economics, psychology, arts, agriculture, industrial and technical, physical education were also emphasized by him. In terms of method of teaching, he actually prescribed the same ancient methods of instruction which were in practice in Gurukula like yoga, meditation, self-learning, etc. In that system, Guru and his disciples lived in close association like the members of a family. Basically, he recommended the practice of yoga for controlling the mind and the emotions, deep meditation for the development of mind, Brahmacharya is necessary for the power of concentration. He emphasized one self-learning where Guru will walk as guide and helpers only. Activities for developing creative potentials, uh, lecture and discussion method for elaborating essential facts, guidance and counseling by the teachers is essential and uh, very helpful to remove doubts of the child. Behavioral sense through a fine model presented by teacher and individual guidance of students by the teachers. Uh, regarding discipline, Swamiji emphasized child-centered education in which child is given full freedom for activity and self-learning. Child should be given full opportunity to develop in a natural environment. Uh, if we look at the place of a teacher, then the Bebekananda actually emphasized the fact that education should be self-centered and he states that the true teacher is who, who can immediately come down uh, to the level of the students and transfer his soul to the student's soul and uh, see through and understand through his mind. Uh, so the main function of the teacher is to eliminate obstacles on the way of the self-development of the child and help him in making the potential actual. The main duty of a teacher is to provide a suitable environment for all ground development of the child. Uh, again, if we see the place of women in his educational thought, then it seems that he was empathic that women must be educated. For he believed that it is the women who mold the next generation and hence the destiny of the country is highly dependent on women's education. According to Vivekananda, there is no chance for welfare in the world unless the condition of women is improved. So, uh, see you in the next part of this unit. Thank you.